The National Zoological Park, commonly known as the National Zoo, is one of the oldest zoos in the United States. It is part of the Smithsonian Institution and does not charge for admission. Founded in 1889, its mission is to "...provide engaging experiences with animals and create and share knowledge to save wildlife and habitats." The National Zoo has two campuses. The first is a 163-acre urban park located at Rock Creek Park in northwest Washington, D.C., 20 minutes from the National Mall by Metrorail. The other campus is the 3,200-acre Smithsonian Conservation Biology Institute SCBI, formerly known as the Conservation and Research Center in Front Royal, Virginia. On this land, there are 180 species of trees, 850 species of woody shrubs and herbaceous plants, 40 species of grasses, and 36 different species of bamboo. The SCBI is a non-public facility devoted to training wildlife professionals in conservation biology and to propagating rare species through natural means and assisted reproduction. The National Zoo is accredited by the Association of Zoos and Aquariums AZA. The two facilities host about 1,800 animals of 300 different species. About one-fifth of them are endangered or threatened. Most species are on exhibit at the Rock Creek Park campus. The best known residents are the giant pandas, but the zoo is also home to birds, great apes, big cats, Asian elephants, insects, amphibians, reptiles, aquatic animals, small mammals and many more. The SCBI facility houses between 30 and 40 endangered species at any given time depending on research needs and recommendations from the zoo and the conservation community. The zoo was one of the first to establish a scientific research program. Because it is a part of the Smithsonian Institution, the National Zoo receives federal appropriations for operating expenses. A new master plan for the park was introduced in 2008 to upgrade the park's exhibits and layout. The National Zoo is open every day of the year except for December 25, Christmas Day. History The zoo first started as the National Museum's Department of Living Animals in 1886. By an act of Congress in 1889, for "...the advancement of science and the instruction and recreation of the people." The National Zoo was created. In 1890, it became a part of the Smithsonian Institution. Three well-known individuals drew up plans for the zoo, Samuel Langley, third secretary of the Smithsonian, William T. Hornaday, noted conservationist and head of the Smithsonian's vertebrate division, and Frederick Law Olmsted, the premier landscape architect of his day. William Temple Hornaday was the curator of all 185 animals when the park was first opened. Together, they designed a new zoo to exhibit animals for the public and to serve as a refuge for wildlife, such as bison and beaver, which were rapidly vanishing from North America. For the first 50 years, the National Zoo, like most zoos around the world, focused on exhibiting one or two representative exotic animal species. The number of many species in the wild began to decline drastically because of human activities. Sometimes animals became unexpectedly available. In 1899, the Kansas frontiersman Charles Buffalo Jones captured a bighorn sheep for the zoo. The fate of animals and plants became a pressing concern. Many of these species were favorite zoo animals, such as elephants and tigers, hence the staff began to concentrate on the long-term management and conservation of entire species. In the mid-1950s, the zoo hired its first full-time permanent veterinarian, reflecting a priority placed on professional health care for the animals. In 1958, Friends of the National Zoo was founded. The citizen group's first accomplishment was to persuade Congress to fund the zoo's budget entirely through the Smithsonian. Previously, the zoo's budget was divided between appropriations for the Smithsonian and the District of Columbia. Congressional funding placed the zoo on a firmer financial base, allowing for a period of growth and improvement. In 2006, Congress approved an additional $14.6 million for renovations in both facilities. 
Fonz incorporated as a non-profit organization and turned its attention to developing education and volunteer programs, supporting these efforts from its operation of concessions at the zoo, and expanding community support for the zoo through a growing membership which annually raises between $4 million and $8 million for the zoo. In the early 1960s, the zoo turned its attention to breeding and studying threatened and endangered species. Although some zoo animals had been breeding and raising young, it was not understood why some species did so successfully while others did not. In 1965, the zoo created the Zoological Research Division to study the reproduction, behavior, and ecology of zoo species, and to learn how best to meet the needs of the animals. In 1975, the zoo established the Conservation and Research Center (CRC). In 2010, the complex was renamed the Smithsonian Conservation Biology Institute SCBI, a title also used as an umbrella term for the scientific endeavors that take place on both campuses. On 3,200 acres 13 square kilometers in the Virginia countryside, rare species, such as Mongolian wild horses, scimitar horned oryx, maned wolves, cranes, and others live and breed in spacious surroundings. SCBI's modern efforts emphasize reproductive physiology, analysis of habitat and species relationships, genetics, husbandry, and the training of conservation scientists. The zoo's last hippopotamus, Happy, was transferred to Milwaukee County Zoo in 2009 to make space for elephant trails. Topic: <laughs> Modern status. Expanding knowledge about the needs of zoo animals and commitment to their well-being has changed the look of the National Zoo. Today, animals live in natural groupings rather than individually. Rare and endangered species, such as golden lion tamarins, Sumatran tigers, and Saris cranes, breed and raise their young, showing the success of the zoo's conservation and research programs. The zoo's research team studies animals both in the wild and at the zoo. Its research encompasses reproductive biology, conservation biology, biodiversity monitoring, veterinary medicine, nutrition, behavior, ecology, and bird migration. The National Zoo has developed public education programs to help students, teachers, and families explore the intricacies of the animal world. The zoo also designs specialized programs to train wildlife professionals from around the world and to form a network to provide crucial support for international conservation. The National Zoo is at the forefront of the use of web technology and programming to expand its programs to an international virtual audience. The National Zoo has been the home to giant pandas since Ling Ling and Sing Sing arrived at the zoo in 1972. Since 2000, Mei Shang and Tian Tian also lived there. On July 9, 2005, Mei Shang gave birth to Tai Shan, who went to China in February 2010. On August 23, 2013, Mei Shang gave birth to Bao Bao, who still resides at the zoo. On August 22, 2015, Mei Shang gave birth to Bei Bei, who still resides at the zoo. Plans for the future include modernizing the zoo's aging facilities and expanding its education, research, and conservation efforts in Washington, Virginia, and in the wild. As part of a 10-year renewal program, Asia Trail, a series of habitats for seven Asian species including sloth bears, red pandas, and clouded leopards, was created. Elephant Trails, opened in 2013, provides a new home for the zoo's Asian elephants. Kids Farm Exhibit, opened in 2004, was slated for closure in 2011 but is to remain open for another 10 years following a donation to the exhibit. The zoo, which is supported by tax revenues and open to everyone, attracts 2 million visitors per year. According to the Washington Post in 2005, the National Zoo has a federal law enforcement agency deployed on its grounds, the National Zoological Park Police, NZPP, which consists of full time law enforcement officers. The NZPP is an agency that has been recognized by the United States Congress and is one of five original police agencies within the District of Columbia with full police powers. They work very closely with the Metropolitan Police Department, the United States Park Police, Department of State, Capitol Police, Federal Bureau of Investigation, and the Department of Defense. The agency is considered the first line of defense in the event of any crisis. Dennis W. Kelly was named director of the zoo on February 15, 2010, overseeing both campuses. Kelly succeeded John Barry, who was the National Zoo director for three years until February 2009, when he resigned to become the director of the U.S. Office of Personnel Management under the Obama administration. 
Stephen Monfort, the zoo's associate director for conservation and science, served as the acting director between February 2009 and February 2010. Kelly retired as the zoo's director in November 2017. Stephen Monfort was named acting director. Topic: Exhibits. Topic: Giant panda habitat. The zoo's giant panda habitat features three outdoor areas with animal enrichment, as well as an indoor area with a rocky outcrop, a waterfall, and viewing areas. The zoo's pandas, named Mei Shang and Tian Tian, are on loan from the China Wildlife Conservation Association, and will live at the zoo until 2020. They are the focus of a research, conservation, and breeding program that aims to preserve the species. Mei Shang and Tian Tian successfully had a male cub, named Tai Shan, in 2005. Tai Shan currently lives at the Bifengxia Panda Base in Sichuan, China, taking part in Bifengxia's breeding program. On September 16, 2012, Mei Shang gave birth to another cub, but the cub died six days after its birth. On August 23, 2013, Mei Shang gave birth to two cubs, one, a female named Bao Bao, survived, while the other was stillborn. The pandas live at the Fujifilm Giant Panda Habitat, a state-of-the-art indoor and outdoor exhibit. The exhibit is designed to replicate the rocky, lush terrain of the panda's natural habitat. May delivered two cubs in August 2015, one died a few days later. Both cubs, fraternal twins, were sired by Tian Tian. The surviving male was given the name Beibei -E on September 25, 2015 and was on public exhibit in January 2016. Asia Trail A group of Asia-themed exhibits opened in 2006. Along with the giant pandas, the area also displays sloth bears, fishing cats, red pandas, a clouded leopard, Asian small clawed otters, and Asian elephants. Next to the pandas is an exhibit for Japanese giant salamander. However, in mid-2016, the salamander died and the exhibit space is currently unoccupied. The zoo keeps members of the species off exhibit in the reptile house. Elephant trails In spring 2008, the National Zoo began construction on elephant trails, a new home for its seven Asian elephants. The first part of the $52 million project opened in September 2010, expanding the zoo's former elephant area with a 5,700-square-foot barn, two new yards one with a pool, and a quarter-mile walkway through woods, a total of 1.9 acres 0.77 hectares of outdoor space, bringing the total size of elephant trails to 2 acres 0.81 hectares. Elephant Trails, a campaign to save Asian elephants is a comprehensive breeding, education, and scientific research program. It is designed to help scientists care for elephants in zoos and save them in the wild. The Elephant House was closed to the public from September 14, 2009 until late March 2013 for construction of the second phase of Elephant Trails. This includes the Elephant Community Center, an indoor exhibit with many interpretive signs and graphics. Lemur Island Lemur Island is a moated island that is home to a group of ring-tailed lemurs, red-fronted lemurs and black and white ruffed lemurs. Uncle Beasley, a fiberglass triceratops that Louis Paul Jonas created for the Dinoland Pavilion at the 1964 New York World's Fair, can now be seen near the island. The life-size statue, which had been located on the National Mall near the National Museum of Natural History until 1994, is named for a dinosaur in the 1956 children's book, The Enormous Egg, by Oliver Butterworth and in the book's 1968 television movie adaptation, in which the statue appeared. The Small Mammal House The majority of the zoo's smaller mammal species live in the small mammal house. 
The species on display include golden lion tamarins, golden-headed lion tamarins, pale-headed sake monkeys, Joffroy's marmosets, red-ruffed lemurs, black-footed ferrets, dwarf mongooses, meerkats, brush-tailed batongs, striped skunks, La Plata three-banded armadillos, screaming hairy armadillos, sand cats, fennec foxes, naked mole rats, southern tamanduas, rock hyrax and several others, a sister pair of white-nosed coatis and a male, female pair of black howler monkeys can be found behind the building building, while a pair of Bennett's wallabies can be found along the side of the building. Despite not being mammals, two von der Decken's hornbills and a male green arasari can be found in the building. The American Trail The American Trail exhibit houses a variety of North American species. These include five California sea lions, four gray seals, one harbor seal, three North American beavers, two North American river otters, two bald eagles, two common ravens, three brown pelicans, and two gray wolves. After facing severe threats, the majority of American trail species have rebounded thanks to conservation efforts. Many of the residents of American trail have been listed as endangered. All of plants in the animal enclosures on American trail exhibit are native to North America. The exhibit also features a café called Seal Rock Café, which offers dishes crafted from local, seasonal, and sustainable ingredients. Menu items include Best Aquaculture Practices BAP Certified Shrimp and Marine Stewardship Council MSC Certified Fish. The American Trail was recently renovated and reopened in late summer 2012. The Great Ape House. The Great Ape House is separated into two sets of enclosures. One houses seven Bornean orangutans, two males named Kiko and Kyle, four females named Lucy, Batang, Iris and Bonnie, and a male infant named Red, born in 2016. The other houses seven western lowland gorillas four males named Baraka, Kojo, Kwame and Mok, as well as three females named Mandara, Kibibi and Kalea. The orangutans are allowed access to the think tank see below by traveling along the O-line, a series of high cables supported by metal towers that enable the orangutans to move between the two buildings. Kyle, Batang and Red are Bornean orangutans and Kiko, Lucy, Iris and Bonnie are all hybrid orangutans. The Think Tank The think tank is an area designed to educate visitors about how animals think and learn about their surroundings. The think tank features several interactive displays that teach visitors how zoologists conduct their studies. The zoo's orangutans, which are sometimes used in keeper demonstrations, are allowed to move from the great ape house to the think tank, and the building includes suitable enclosures for the apes should they choose to stay there. Other animals kept and studied in the think tank include brown rats, land hermit crabs, four Allen swamp monkeys and three red-tailed monkeys. The zoo once had a population of celibes crested macaques living in an outdoor cage. <laughs> Gibbon Ridge Gibbon Ridge is an enclosure housing two different species of gibbon, two northern white-cheeked gibbons a male named Sydney and female named Tuyan, and two Siamang a male named Bradley and a female named Ronnie. <laughs> Great Cats on Lion and Tiger Hill Great Cats is separated into three enclosures. The zoo rotates African lions, two Sumatran tigers a female named Demay and a male named Sparky and a male Amur tiger named Pavel between the three exhibits. One of the zoo's tigers, Soyono, was euthanized in November 2012. She was 19 years old, which is close to the limits of her lifespan. The tiger looked to be suffering from spondylosis, a degenerative spinal disorder, which afflicts big cats as they get older. On January 24, 2014, the zoo's 10 year old female lion, Nababeep, gave birth to three cubs in an eight hour period. Two of the cubs survived, and were the first lion cub litter born at the zoo in four years, the third for Nababeep, and the fourth for the eight year old father, Luke. The birth followed the birth of two rare Sumatran tiger cubs to Mother Demay on August 5, 2013. 
There are also two currently indefinitely unoccupied exhibits for bobcats and caracals. Topic: The Cheetah Conservation Station. This is an outdoor exhibit designed to mimic the African savanna and educate visitors about cheetahs and what is being done to preserve them in the wild. The main part of the Cheetah Conservation Station consists of two enclosures separated by a fence. One enclosure houses four South African cheetahs both males, Justin, Gat named for Justin Gatlin, Bakari, Donnie and Copley, while the other houses one male Grevy's zebra named Moyo. Other animals on display in the area include two scimitar horned oryxes, four dama gazelles, two ruples vultures, one satatunga, three red river hogs, two male maned wolves named Mateo and Quito, a species native to South America, an Abyssinian ground hornbill, and three lesser kudu. A female Tamar wallaby named Maji had been on display until December 2013, when she was euthanized at the very old age of 18. Most do not live beyond 10. The invertebrate exhibit This exhibit housed the zoo's collection of invertebrates. It was permanently closed to the public on June 22, 2014 due to inadequate funding. The zoo has mentioned they eventually want to build a hall of biodiversity which will include invertebrates. The zoo's birdhouse is currently under renovation and once complete some invertebrates such as horseshoe crabs will be included. Topic. Amazonia This South America-themed walkthrough exhibit contains animal and plant species native to the Amazon basin. Animals on display include multiple species of freshwater stingrays, oscars, silver arowanas, yellow-spotted Amazon river turtles, arapaimas, black pacus, red-bellied piranhas, white-eared titi monkeys, a southern two-toed sloth, sunbitterns, red-crested cardinals, yellow-rumped caciques and many more. The Amazonia Science Gallery is located on the lower level. Here visitors can learn about the zoo's efforts to protect species around the globe. Some of the species on display include Panamanian golden frogs, African clawed frogs, aquatic Sicilians, barred tiger salamanders, gray tree frogs and many species of poison frogs. Located within the science gallery is the coral lab. Many corals are on display along with clownfish, anemones, peacock mantis shrimp, warty frogfish and other species. The electric fish's demonstration lab features a five-foot-long electric eel. Blunt nose knife fish, elephant nose knife fish, and black ghost knife fish are also featured. Topic: The Reptile Discovery Center. The zoo's reptile and amphibian house exhibits 70 species of reptiles and amphibians. These include Aldabra tortoises, radiated tortoises, spider tortoises, Cuban crocodiles, agarial, a Philippine crocodile, eastern indigo snakes, gaboon vipers, Gila monsters, green anacondas, Burmese rock pythons, green tree pythons, Timor pythons, king cobras, northern copperheads, eastern diamondback rattlesnakes, hellbenders, eastern red-backed salamanders, long-tailed salamanders, alligator snapping turtles and many more. Behind the building are exhibits for a Komodo dragon, Chinese alligators and a false gavial. In the front of the building is an exhibit for an American alligator named Wally. The Bird House As of 2017, the Bird House is closed for renovations for Experience Migration, an exhibition dedicated to migratory birds. Experience Migration will open in 2021. Topic: The Kids Farm. The Kids Farm is aimed primarily at children and housing domesticated livestock. The exhibit also features a pizza garden, which grows traditional pizza ingredients. Animals kept in the kids' farm include alpacas, Asaba Island hogs, miniature Mediterranean donkeys, Hereford and Holstein cows, and Nigerian dwarf, Anglo-Nubian and San Clemente Island goats. In 2011, the zoo announced plans to close the kids' farm due to budgetary constraints. However, a $1.4 million donation from State Farm Insurance allowed the exhibit to remain open. Topic. 
Topic: American Bison Exhibit. The zoo opened a new American Bison Exhibit on August 30, 2014, as part of their 125th anniversary celebration. The exhibit features two female bison, named Zora and Wilma, that were transported to the zoo earlier that year from the American Prairie Reserve in northeastern Montana. Other animals Other animals in the zoo's collection include spectacled bears near the Amazonia exhibit, Shavalsky horse, which is now gone in a yard adjacent to the small mammal house, North American porcupines near the Great Cats exhibit, black-tailed prairie dogs near the Great Cats exhibit and Patagonian maras near American Trail. Notable animals Topic: Smoky Bear. One of the most famous animals to have spent much of his life at the zoo was Smoky Bear, the living symbol of the cartoon icon created as part of a campaign to prevent forest fires. A black bear cub rescued from a fire, he lived at the zoo from 1950 until his death in 1976. During his time at the zoo, he had millions of visitors and an abundance of personal mail addressed to him, up to 13,000 letters a week, such that the U.S. Post Office designated a special zip code for correspondence addressed to him. During his time at the zoo, he was married to Goldie Bear, with the hope that one of his offspring would continue to hold the title of Smokey Bear. When the pair produced no offspring, an orphaned bear cub was added to their cage. It was named Little Smokey with the announcement that the bear couple had adopted the new cub. In 1975, an official ceremony was held to recognize the retirement of Smokey Bear and the new title of Smokey Bear II for Little Smokey. Upon the death of the original Smokey Bear, the Washington Post printed an obituary, recognizing him as a New Mexico native who had resided in Washington, D.C. for many years, working for the government. Topic. Giant pandas Coming off the heels of President Richard Nixon's historic 1972 visit to China, the Chinese government donated two giant pandas, Ling Ling female and Sing Sing male, to the official United States delegation. First Lady Pat Nixon donated the pandas to the zoo, where she welcomed them in an April 1972 ceremony. The first giant pandas in America, Ling Ling and Sing Sing were among the most popular animals at the zoo. Ling Ling died in 1992 and Sing Sing in 1999. Although Ling Ling and Sing Sing had five cubs between 1983 and 1989, all died as infants, a new pair of pandas, female Mei Shang, beautiful fragrance, and male Tian Tian, more and more, arrived on loan from the Chinese government in late 2000. The zoo paid an estimated $10 million for the 10-year loan. On July 9, 2005, a male panda cub was born at the zoo. It was the first surviving panda birth at the zoo and the product of artificial insemination by the zoo's reproductive research team. The cub was named Tai Shan, Peaceful Mountain. On October 17, 100 days after his birth, the panda went without a name for its first 100 days, in observance of a Chinese custom. Tai Shan is property of the Chinese government and was scheduled to be sent to China after his second birthday, although that deadline was extended in 2007 by two years. Tai Shan left Washington, D.C., on February 4, 2010, and was taken to the Yaan Bifengxia Panda Base, part of the Wolong Nature Reserve's Panda Conservation Center. On September 16, 2012, Mei Shang gave birth to another cub, believed by zoo officials to have been a female, which died after about a week. Initial results from a necropsy animal autopsy revealed the abnormal presence of fluid in the abdomen and also discoloration of the liver hepatic tissue of unknown etiology. The cub had managed to nurse before death because milk was found in its system. Zoo officials said that, while upsetting, they and 
by extension, the public can hope to learn more about giant panda breeding, reproduction, and health as a result, and will work closely and cooperatively with their Chinese colleagues during the inquiry. In January 2011, Dennis Kelly, director of the National Zoo, and Zhang Chunlin, secretary general of the China Wildlife Conservation Association, signed a new giant panda cooperative research and breeding agreement, extending the zoo's giant panda program for five more years, further cementing the two countries' commitment to the conservation of the species. The new agreement, effective through December 5, 2015, stipulates that the zoo will conduct research in the areas of breeding and cub behavior. In the summer of 2013, Mei Shang gave birth to a live female panda cub, Tian Tian is the father, a second cub was stillborn, named Bao Bao, treasure, or precious, decided through a naming contest on the 100th day of her existence. As of January 18, 2014, Bao Bao is on public exhibit and drawing crowds, greatly increasing zoo attendance and online views via Pandacam. Mei Shang gave birth in August 2015 to two live cubs, the smaller one died a few days later keepers had to care for it after Mei decided to focus on the larger cub. Sperm from both Tian Tian and another male giant panda based in a China preserve was used. It was determined on August 28, 2015 that both cubs were male and sired by Tian Tian. The larger, surviving cub was named Beibei Precious Treasure, on September 25, 2015. In celebration of a state visit, the name was selected by First Lady of the United States, Michelle Obama, and First Lady of the People's Republic of China, Peng Liyuan. Bao Bao was healthy at that time, eating bamboo and special fruitsical treats, having been separated from May at 18 months of age. She celebrated her second birthday in August 2015, shortly after the cubs were born. Her contract extended to August 2017. Bao Bao left the National Zoo on February 22, 2017 for the Dujiangyan base of the China Panda Conservation and Research Center. Topic. Special programs and events In partnership with Friends of the National Zoo a non-profit organization, the zoo holds annual fundraisers Zufari, Guppy Gala, and Boo at the Zoo and free events Sunset Serenades, Fiesta Musical. Proceeds support animal care, conservation science, education and sustainability at the National Zoo. Wu at the Zoo, a Valentine's Day February 14th talk by some of the zoo's animal experts discussing the fascinating, and often quirky, world of animal dating, mating, and reproductive habits. All proceeds benefit the zoo's animal care program. Earth Day, party for the planet, celebrating Earth Day at the National Zoo. Guests can learn simple daily actions they can take to enjoy a more environmentally friendly lifestyle. Easter Monday – Easter Monday has been a Washington-area multicultural tradition for many years. There is a variety of family activities, entertainment and special opportunities to learn more about the animals. Admission is free, and this event traditionally welcomes thousands of area families. The celebration began in response to the inability of African Americans to participate in the annual Easter egg roll held at the White House, until the Dwight Eisenhower presidency. Zufari, a casual evening of gourmet foods, fine wines, entertainment and dancing under the stars. Each year, thousands of attendees enjoy delicacies prepared by master chefs from 100 of the D.C. area's finest restaurants. All proceeds benefit the zoo's animal care program. Snore and Roar, a FONS program that allows individuals and families to spend the night at the zoo, in sleeping bags inside tents. A late-night flashlight tour of the zoo and a two-hour exploration of an animal house or exhibit area led by a zoo keeper are part of the experience. Snore and roar dates are offered between June and September each year. Brew at the zoo – Guests can sample beer from a variety of microbreweries at the zoo. All proceeds benefit the zoo's animal care program. Zoo Fiesta – Fonds celebrates Hispanic Heritage Month with an annual fiesta at the National Zoo. Animal demonstrations, Hispanic and Latino music, costumed dancers, traditional crafts and Latin American foods are offered. Rock and Roar, an event featuring live music, food and drink, and viewings of lion and tiger enrichment. 
Autumn Conservation Festival at Smithsonian Conservation Biology Institute (SCBI). Visitors can talk with scientists one-on-one -on -one and learn about their research and the tools and technology they use to understand animals and their environments. Guests can get behind the scenes looks at some of the SCBI's endangered animals. Boo at the zoo families with children ages 2 to 12 trick or treat in a safe environment and receive special treats from more than 40 treat stations. There are animal encounters, keeper talks and festive decorations. All proceeds benefit the zoo's animal care program. Zoo Lights, the national zoo's annual winter celebration. Guests can walk through the zoo when it is covered with thousands of sparkling environmentally friendly lights and animated exhibits, attend special keeper talks and enjoy live entertainment. Topic. Friends of the National Zoo Friends of the National Zoo the zoo's membership program, is the partner of the National Zoological Park that has been providing support to wildlife conservation programs at the zoo and around the world since 1958. FONS members receive free parking, discounts at the zoo's stores and restaurants, and Smithsonian Zoogoer, a magazine with the latest zoo news, research and photos. FONS's 40,000 members include about 20,000 families, largely in the Washington metropolitan area, and more than 1,000 volunteers. FONS provides guest services, development support, education and outreach programs, concessions management, and financial support for research and conservation. FONS also offers a summer day camp at the Rock Creek Park facility, and a residential nature camp at SCBI in Front Royal. <laughs> Smithsonian Conservation Biology Institute The Smithsonian established its Conservation Biology Institute in 2010 to serve as an umbrella for its global effort to conserve species and train future generations of conservationists. Headquartered in Front Royal, Virginia, the facility was previously known as the National Zoo's Conservation and Research Center. The SCBI facilitates and promotes research programs based at Front Royal, at the National Zoo in Washington and at field research and training sites around the world. Its efforts support one of the four main goals of the Smithsonian's new strategic plan, which advances understanding and sustaining a biodiverse planet. Conservation biology is a field of science based on the premise that the conservation of biological diversity is important and benefits current and future human societies. The institute consists of six centers. Conservation Ecology Center CEC, focuses on recovering and sustaining at-risk wildlife species and their supporting ecosystems in key marine and terrestrial regions throughout the globe. Migratory Bird Center, studies neotropical songbirds and wetland birds, the role of disease in bird population declines, and the environmental challenges facing urban and suburban birds. They also train professionals in environmental coffee certification throughout Latin America. Center for Species Survival CSS, researches issues in reproductive physiology, endocrinology, cryobiology, embryobiology, animal behavior, wildlife toxicology and assisted reproduction. They strive to create knowledge that ensures self-sustaining populations in zoos and in the wild. Center for Conservation and Evolutionary Genetics CCEG, works to understand and conserve biodiversity through genetic research, specializing in the genetic management of wild and captive animal populations, non-invasive and ancient DNA analyses, systematics, disease diagnosis and dynamics, genetic services to the zoo community, and application of genetic methods to animal behavior and ecology. Center for Conservation Education and Sustainability CBES, teaches conservation principles and practices, finding ways to help scientists, managers, companies and industries become more environmentally responsible. Center for Wildlife Health and Husbandry Sciences, provides for the mental and physical well-being of every animal at the zoo through the complex endeavor of animal care. Incidents. In 2002, the zoo's head veterinarian at the time, Dr. Susan Murray, was accused of altering medical records. Murray responded that the software used, "...was not designed as a legal document, but rather as a user-friendly way of maintaining and sharing important information." 
The American Veterinary Medical Association specifically states, "...without the express permission of the practice owner, it is unethical for a veterinarian to remove, copy, or use the medical records or any part of any record." In January 2003, red pandas died after eating rat poison that had been buried in their yard by a pest control contractor. The incident led the city of Washington, D.C. to seek to fine the zoo over its claim of federally granted immunity. In July 2003, a predator entered an exhibit and killed a bald eagle. Zoo officials later stated that the animal was likely killed by a red fox. In 2005, a three-year-old Sulawesi macaque named Ripley died in the think tank when two keepers closed a hydraulic door without realizing the monkey was in the doorway. In January 2005, the National Academy of Sciences released its final report on a two-year investigation into animal care and management at the National Zoo. The committee found that most animals were well cared for, and there was little to question regarding large mammal deaths from 1999 to 2003. Their evaluation suggested that the publicized animal deaths were not indicative of a wider, undiscovered problem with animal care. The problems at the zoo, which culminated with director Lucy Spellman's resignation, included facility and budget shortcomings, although the animal care problems were prominently highlighted. The zoo added a new head pathologist and other veterinarians. In January 2006, the National Zoo euthanized an Asian elephant named Tony. The elephant had been suffering from arthritis and poor body conditions. Animal rights groups alleged that inadequate care led to her death. In December 2006, a clouded leopard escaped from its exhibit at the Asia Trails due to faulty fencing. See also Perry Lions, the lion statues that guard the entrance to the zoo Woodley Park Station Washington Metro access to the Rock Creek Park Campus.